Before we go in depth on the configuration, we just need to understand that VLANs and subnets are two different things, but they both deal with segmenting and partitioning parts of the network, but they can also be used together as well. VLANs operate at the data link layer, so layer two of the OSI model, and the primary purpose of a VLAN is to separate hosts into logical broadcast domains on a network switch. Network switches also operate at layer two of the OSI model and they use MAC addresses to make forwarding decisions. VLANs will help improve their network performance, an example being by grouping devices together that are constantly in communication with each other, such as IP cameras. They're constantly trying to communicate to the MVR. So these could be placed on the VLAN. A VLAN adds a layer of security as well, because a host in say VLAN 20 won't be able to communicate with a host in VLAN 10, for instance. I've got a video with a full explanation on how VLANs work, so it'd be good to go and check that one out. Subnets operate at layer three of the OSI model, so the network layer, and the purpose of a subnet is to create, again, logical partitioned networks where we can use IP addresses to help hosts communicate. Routers operate at layer three of the OSI model, and the reason you'd add a router in is to allow routing between VLANs, for instance. Other reasons to use a router is to give a dynamic class A, B or C network address to hosts and also give them access to the wide area network or in other words, the internet. So in my system here, I've got a Draytech 2862 router and a Cisco Catalyst 1000 network switch. And the aim here is to create IP subnet based VLANs. We want to create three VLANs at layer two on the ethernet switch. VLAN one is going to be the default VLAN. Uh, the default VLAN is where untagged traffic is directed. Cisco advises that the default VLAN is changed to something other than one, for instance, just for security reasons. VLAN 10 is going to be CCTV VLAN and VLAN 20 is going to be for satellite box, for instance, because uh, as we know, SkyQ can be the root problem to network issues. As this is at layer two, the host won't have any access to the outside world. It'll generate a self-assigned APIPA address or automatic private IP address, as there's no DHCP server assigning IP addresses to any hosts. In the Cisco Catalyst switch, we go to configuration and VLAN and under layer two VLAN at the bottom of the page, we have the VLAN configuration table. In there is the default VLAN. We'll leave that in there for now. And I'm gonna to go to add and give an ID of 10 and just give this a name, CCTV. Then we have some options for DHCP snooping, IGMP snooping, I'll leave that as is and press save and apply. Then I'll create another VLAN, give it an ID of 20, and I'll just name that Sky, and then save and apply. Now I've got three VLANs, one, which is the default VLAN, 10 and 20, and I need to assign these to ports now. Back under configuration, I'll go to ports, and I'll click on port three, and go to the port settings. I'll set the switch mode to access and access VLAN 10. In the list is port fast. I'll turn that on. This allows devices to connect to the network immediately. Leaving it off makes the port transition from listening and learning states to a forwarding state, which takes about 30 seconds to negotiate before connecting. You'd use this for switch to switch configuration, for instance. I'll then click on port four change the switch mode to access and access VLAN 10 as well and enable port fast. There's a reason why I'm accessing this to this same VLAN. I'll show this shortly. I'll then go to port five and set the switch mode to access and give it VLAN 20 and also enable port fast. And that's the VLAN sorted. I'll configure the trunk later on. So ports one and two are on the default VLAN, which is untagged, and that will be in communication with the router, which is handing out DHCP IPv4 addresses and has access to the wide area network. This is technically like a network you get out of the box. So you plug in and away you go, a flat network. Ports three and four are members on the VLAN 10 broadcast domain, but they've got no access to the gateway because we haven't configured the subnet or VLAN in the router to send tag traffic to the switch. 
the tag being ID 10. Port 5 is a member of VLAN 20 and for the same reason as VLAN 10 doesn't have any access to the DHCP server or the wide area network. So I've got a Windows machine here generating a ping to my Mac and my Mac is generating a ping to the Windows machine and each are responding to one another on a class C IP address because ports 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 are configured on the default VLAN all within the same broadcast domain. If I move the MacBook to port 5 and the Windows machine to port 4, both machines will generate an automatic private IP address as that VLAN is not in communication with the DHCP server. But they're on different broadcast domains, so the Windows machine has a self-assigned address of 169.254.121.1 and the MacBook has an address of 169.254.170.121. That's the telltale sign of uh, an automatic self-assigned address is they'll start with 169.254.x.x. If I ping from the Windows machine 169.254.170.121, which is the MacBook, I get a timeout. But if I now move my Mac to port 3 in the same broadcast domain as the Windows machine, let it get a self-assigned IP, and then ping the Mac from the Windows machine, so 169.254.170.121, I get a response. The laptops can see one another. Let's set up some subnets then, which requires a layer three device. Routers live at layer three, so let's do a configuration. I've got my Draytech 2862 router, and if I connect my MacBook back into switch port two, I then have access to the default VLAN. So logged into the router under LAN general setup, we can set up to eight subnets. LAN 1's already configured, which I'm going to leave, and I'll go to LAN 2, and I'll click on the details page and click enable. So we've got an option here for NAT usage, NAT being the network address translation, and that's where we can translate uh, private IPv4 addresses to a public address, and this is what we use and what most networks use anyway. For routing usage is where we can assign a host device a public IP address subject to the ISP providing a block of public IP addresses. In the IP field, I'm going to change the gateway address to 192.168.10.1. Then we have the subnet mask. I'll leave this as a 24-bit subnet mask. I've got a video on subnetting and it goes into in-depth detail on how a subnet mask works. Now we want our hosts on the subnet to obtain IP addresses automatically. So we need a dynamic host configuration protocol server or DHCP server, which operates at layer seven in the application layer of the OSI model. But most routers these days have DHCP servers built in. We can disable it. So all hosts on the subnet will have to statically assign addresses. We can enable the server, so then hosts will obtain addresses automatically. We have the DHCP server enabled and we'll leave the start IP address as 192.168.10.10 and leave the pool counts as 100, just for this demonstration. This is the amount of dynamic addresses the router can assign. You'd, it, you'd adjust it accordingly to your network design. We set the gateway, so the router address on the subnet is 192.168.10.1. The lease time is the time a host will have the IP address before it's renegotiated to see if that address is still in use. Then we have the DNS server address. We can point this to a direct DNS such as 1.1.1.1 or 8.8.8.8 or we can point it to a dedicated DNS server. Then I press save and it wants me to reboot but I want to continue with the setup so I'll just ignore that for the minute. Then go back to LAN and go to details and do the same but assign the subnet to be on 192.168. 20.0 network. Click OK and reboot the router. And that's the subnets completed. We now need to assign the subnets to a VLAN. So back in the Draytech router, under LAN is VLANs. And what we're going to do is create a trunk between the router and the switch. A trunk will contain the VLAN identifiers, so one being untagged, 
10 and 20 being tagged. This is called an 802.1Q trunk. A trunk contains all the VLAN identifiers within it. So when an ethernet frame reaches the switch, the switch sees if the device, the host device MAC address is populated in its MAC address table. If it is, then it sends the data via the identifier within the frame to the relevant port associated within the VLAN. In my VLAN video, I explain about the ethernet frame and where the tag is added and how traffic is directed to the host via the switch. Anyway, we're going to enable VLAN and now we have the famous Draytech VLAN table. On the left, we have the VLAN index and then we have the port we want to assign the VLAN information to. I'm going to do port one through to four to have the ability to access the default VLAN, but port four configure as a trunk to allow access to all VLANs. As a tip for security, you could assign ports one and three to a VLAN black hole, for instance. So create a VLAN against the LAN subnet that doesn't exist. So if someone connects to the router, they won't be able to access anything. You could also configure all ports to be tagged, for instance, but let's take some alternative setup. So that's another video. Carrying on, this is a Wi-Fi capable router. So we can assign VLANs to SSIDs. Again, I've got a video of how you assign VLANs to an SSID. And then we have the subnet. In the drop down, we can choose the LAN we created in the general setup page. Finally, we have the VLAN identifiers. We can enable them and put in 10 against LAN 2 and 20 against LAN 3. LAN 1 is the default VLAN, so we want untagged traffic to be on that. Press OK and reboot the router. So once I'm rebooted, I'm going to generate a continuous ping on the Windows machine to 1.1.1.1 and 192.168.20.1. So 20.1 being the gateway. I'm not getting any response, but I haven't set the trunk on my Cisco switch. So we'll go to the web UI and I'll go to configuration of the Cisco switch, go to ports and select port number 10. And we're gonna change the switch mode to trunk and allow it to access all the VLANs and also enable port fast as well and then click apply. I'm going to go back to the Windows machine and disconnect it from the Ethernet switch and reconnect the cable. If I do IP config on the Windows machine, I now get an IP address within the network range of 192.168.20.0 which is associated with VLAN 20. And then the default gateway is 192.168.20.1. If I move my MacBook over to port three, associated with VLAN 10, I then got an address of 192.168.10.10 and a gateway of 10.1. If I try to ping the Windows machine for my MacBook, I get a host unreachable message. And that's just what I wanted. Separation, segmentation and partitioning. The official purpose of a router within VLANs is to route traffic between those VLANs and allow communication between the hosts. But that's another video. That's how you set up a Draytech router for subnet based VLANs. 